Hey everybody, in this episode I'll be talking to Greg Thompson, the owner of Local Heroes, a comic book shop here in Norfolk, Virginia. Dawn and I have been going to the shop for about 10 years, and we love the store and everyone that works there. I'll talk to Greg about why he decided to open a shop and how things in the comics culture have been changing over the last few years. So come along with me to Local Heroes. Thanks for talking to us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's a yeah. pleasure. Yeah, it's it's fun. We got to come in, be in the shop after hours. Yeah, yeah, it's very Just quiet. Kind of, it's so different. I'm <laughs> expecting all, all of the you know props and comic book characters to come to life any second. Right. Uh, how is it owning a comic shop in 2019? Um, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love coming to work every day, and it, business is is solid. Uh, I think things peaked about three years ago. Really? Um, Comic sales wise, just like single issue collection, single issue comic wise, mm -hmm. um, but there's other areas that have made up for it. Collectibles, uh, kind of geek related merch. Um, we sell a lot of stuff that's aimed at what, like women in general. Mm -hmm. um, so those things kind of pick up the slack. Uh, and I still love coming here every day. So it's that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. So uh, you opened in 2008. Yes. 2008. What happened? What made you decide, you know what, uh, it's a nice Tuesday in 2008, I'm going to open a comic book shop? You know, I, I feel like I hit rock bottom in my, in my previous life, and <laughs> <right>. despair <laughs> and like no fear of, of things getting worse was a nice impetus for uh, doing what I really wanted to do. Your only direction was up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. People were like, what would you do if you won the lottery? And I was like, well, I'd open a comic book store. So... That's what I did uh, in December, um, which was the beginning of the financial crisis, December 2008. So it was a terrible right. time to open a business. Okay. You know, um, I guess if you could make it through that. It was, you know, it forced me to be very uh, conservative fiscally um, and to just kind of set good habits for spending money. And, and I think it was a good thing in the long run. And has this been your space the whole time? Yes. Um, we, we signed a lease here, the space, uh, the previous shop was uh, was leaving and we happened in here at the right time so That's I love so this cool. I love the spot we grew up around the same time you know and, and comics were a comic book shop was so hard to find I grew up in st. Louis and there was one there was one comic book shop for the whole metropolitan area wow. that I knew of um, I mean there might have been more than one so if you're from st. Louis from the 80s then you can tell me I'm wrong it's fine um, but I only knew about one there's some great stores in st. Louis now. Um, <laughs> so I think we probably came up with the same sort of culture, comic culture. Um, what what was the comic book culture like in the you know the early 2000s when you were having this idea and then you opened your shop versus what's comic book culture from your point of view as an owner now? You know when I. I would go to 7-Eleven and get my comics off the spinner rack, <laughs> yeah. uh, and when that didn't satiate me, I would go to, um, actually I had to seek out a comic store, because uh, yeah. I was unaware that they were this was a thing, right? right? A store that just sold comics, and people were like, there's a comic store, and I, I, was, I didn't know what to expect, so I rode my bike to um, this comic store, and I was blown away. I was like, this is the greatest place ever. I was maybe cool. eight or nine. Um, then I, I went through uh, college. I lapsed on comics in college because I couldn't afford them. Right. Yeah. And then when I, around 2000 was when I personally got back into reading comics. Uh, I think it was The Dark Knight 2 that brought me back because oh, I read, it, I, I I read an article in USA Today about that. And I was like, that's, that's cool. I'll, I'll go check it out. And that kind of sparked my love of comics all over again. Uh, that was a really good time for comics. Uh, a lot of the big names were coming up then, Bendis, yes. Brubaker. Um, those kind of story-driven comics, I feel, aren't as prevalent now, mm. um, except maybe with, you know, smaller press publishers, Image, um, Fanographics. I feel like the big two are, are character-driven. Uh, that's probably the biggest difference between then and now. All right, cool. That's awesome. What... um. Do you remember what the shop was that you used to go to? Trilogy. It was yeah. tril Trilogy. It's not a trilogy that's still here, but it was a trilogy store. When did you look at sort of comic culture, maybe even just geek culture at large? Because I think it's pretty clearly things are very different. You know, you just said that you were reading about comics in USA Today. You know, I, wow, when's the last time 
something that nerdy, that geeky was in the news, except for like the satanic panic in the 80s. Absolutely. You know, so what for you, just as a fan and something like that, said like, you know, things are starting to change as, as, a, as a comic book geek or as a geek or a nerd or whatever. When, when did you start seeing that change in our culture? Um, you know, honestly, maybe with the Crow uh, movie with Brandon Lee, Brandon, right, I feel like okay. that that movie was awesome. It had a lot of um, popular appeal and it had a really great soundtrack at the time. I, I don't know if you remember the Crow mm-hmm. soundtrack was great. A bunch of really, you know, Nine Inch Nails, The Cure, a bunch of mainstream artists uh, back then um, did that soundtrack. And that's what kind of I was like, wow, this is that was the first time I remember, remember seeing something right. so big and and that got some wider acceptance. There was then a lapse between then and and now, obviously. Sure. Um, but there's a, you know, the, the acceptance of the culture uh, has gotten, I mean, it's, you know, the biggest movies of all time are all comic book movies, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's right. crazy. Yeah. You know, it's good to see. I'm excited that, that uh, it's, it's a cool thing. And when I started, I was like comics only, but as you can see, I've broadened that yeah, scope. Yeah, I mean, there's there we've got we've got a number of statues from the place, you know, in our house. Um, uh, I love seeing the sort of D and D section. It was a few books, and yeah. now it's its own little absolutely side of a of a stand. The pops that man, I would have never have guessed that that yeah. was going to be such a thing. They're the new Beanie Babies, but it's, <laughs> there are so many. What's your favorite part um, of owning and running a comic book shop? You know, I really enjoyed just kind of business management in general. You know, oh, that's, that's, cool. that's really been surprising. Uh, I think I'm good at it. It's fun for me. Um, the other part about owning a comic book store that's great is the fact that, like, there was a woman in here tonight who was like, I really liked this book, uh, Huck by Mark Miller. What oh, else yeah. do you recommend? And I was like, have you read Saga? Uh, she was like, no. And I put it in her hand and she smiled and that's got excited, awesome. and I know that she's going to take that book home, and she'll be back for two, three, four, and yeah. she's going to love it. So turning people on to things that they're going to hold near and dear is pretty awesome. Yeah, and we've gotten a couple of things that sort of have just shown up in our box. That's a really cool thing here at uh, Local Heroes. You can reserve a box and um, put some of the specific things that you know you like in there. It makes you feel like a part of the family here. Absolutely. Uh, I know a lot of comic book shops do that, but this is the first place that I've seen that did it. But there's been times where we've just come in. Um, Descender, I had never heard about it, and there was just a single issue of Descender in there, um, and it was a back issue, and I checked that out and absolutely loved it. And we've got two of the trades now. Um, I'm excited about Ascender that's coming. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, are there any – so I like that you just said that you really like the business side, which is maybe kind of geeky in its own right, the the numbers and yeah. figuring that out. What's, um, what's a unique – sort of challenge to running a comic book shop in, in sort of the atmosphere of um, being a business owner, like t- with that hat? Um, comics are sold on a non-returnable basis. Uh, no. that's, pr- that's probably the hardest thing for me. Um, there's 500 single issue titles a month that come <laughs> out that I have to decide without really, and, and some of them have a sales history, but most of them, a lot of them, don't I kind of have to guess mm. uh, that's probably the most difficult thing is knowing that I'm either it's rare that I get it perfect what do you use to like help influence that like a uh, point of sale system that you know that's made specifically for comic stores and it, it without it I don't see how anyone runs a store without a point of sale because the the data there is is valuable but uh, so that's does that difficult. mean are you able to like look at it and say oh over the last six months we've sold a ton of uh, gothic horror themed books. Absolutely. Let's order some more. Yeah, or if something new is coming out, you know, if there's a new Thor number one, I can look to see who bought the last Thor number one and mm. kind of make an educated guess. Uh, but it's still very hard for that reason. Cool. Have you had, and it, it, I hope you've had, um, if you had that like, all right, I'm safe now. I, I made it. As as a as a business owner, no, no. <laughs> no. I wish someone had told me that I was guaranteed ten years. I would have stressed way less than I did between zero and now. Yeah. Um, but no, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I you're never over, feel that way. You're over a decade. They have their own yeah. word for it. Yeah. That's eleven feel years. Pretty great. It does. It's it's a nice accomplishment. But you know, you can't rest on your laurels because, you know, people that shop here expect to constantly find something new, and mm. I have to, you know, be on the lookout for that um, new thing. Sort of related to that, what's exciting in the world of comics for you right now? Like um, stuff that's on the horizon or trends that are picking up? 
Um, I personally enjoy crime fiction. Uh, I always have. I always will. That's my sweet spot. Southern Bastards, Criminal, uh, anything from Ed Brubaker. Um, I'm really excited for the new X-Men um, book that came out today from Jonathan Hickman. Oh, cool. uh, he's controlling the entire X-Universe for the next two to three years. Oh, that's so, it, it looks like it sort of feels a little like House of M style. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically you know one person's unique vision that's got me really excited for superhero comics, which is the first time that's happened in a while. That's so. that's cool. Well, you kind of just told me what are uh, what are your go to reads? What's in what's in Greg's box? Um, <laughs> which I guess is just the mailbox. But. Absolutely, uh, I love Lazarus. I read that in single issue form. I read a, I read most of my stuff in collected editions mm -hmm. because I can't remember from month to month what I've read or what happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the the books I'm really excited for that I'll read in single issues: Lather, Lazarus, Criminal, Southern Bastards. Uh, I read the new Wildstorm book from Warren Ellis, which was really really great. Um, those are just a few that get me kind of excited every week mm -hmm. to flip Saga when it wasn't on hiatus. Whether it's new or old, what uh, what should they be reading? What do you think that's coming out in singles right now? People should put in their box. Um. You know. <laughs> It's tough because people tend to either go superhero stuff or some genre fiction, yeah. a mix of both. Um, I think the better comics right now are being done outside of superhero comics. Um, today was the exception. Uh, two great superhero books came out. The new Batman, Curse of the White Knight from uh, Sean Murphy and oh. this Jonathan Hickman next book were both really stellar books. Uh, outside of that, I always love what Image does. I feel like they're the most eclectic publisher. They're the new Vertigo. Um, you know, those are great. And, that, you know, if you want just something that's really beautiful or more art-oriented, you can get books from Fanographics, Drawn Quarterly, and even, like, First Second is doing really great books inside of the YA, all-ages genre. That's so cool. those are some of my faves for sure. Um, something that is really cool that you do is, like, you feature local artists and uh, local storytellers, and, and I've, I've seen them in here in the shop and doing a lot of that stuff. How do you find local comic book folks um, and, and decide, you know what, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's do an order of all of this, and let's put those on the shelves? You know, most local men and women who have something to sell are not shy about being like, hey, can I put my comic on the shelf? And I'm happy to do that for anyone. Um, if it sells, great. If it doesn't, then it, it, you know, it loses its spot because shelf space is valuable. Yeah. Uh, but I'm always willing to give a local uh, artist or writer a shot uh, for some shelf space. And you know, we build sort of a relationship with some local people who do shirts for us. We do the noise fest over here. Yeah, so. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that there are there's such an upswell in comic book shops you know, brick and mortar stores. And we live in the age of same day delivery, DoorDash, uh, you know, Uber Eats. I just saw, I saw an ad the other day when I was online for a, I think it's up in Richmond. It's, it's a margarita delivery company. Wow. Like you can get anything you want without yeah. leaving the house. And yet comic book stores, the store you come into, and you don't have a Barnes and Noble reading section or anything like that. Um, why, what do you think it is? What's the magic of these four walls that is really making those stores not only popular again, but kind of seems like starting to thrive? You know, it's, I feel like it's the, it's the discovery of, you know, find, if you have a genuine want to find new interesting stuff, it's way easier to be immersed in it. Uh, the smell, uh, the, the tactile sense of a book always mm -hmm. feels good. Um, we are very niche. We specialize in one very tiny uh, <laughs> thing, comic books. Um, so that helps. But yeah, I'm, I'm amazed anyone leaves the house for anything. <laughs> and when they shop here, it means the world to me. And I want to make sure that they're taken care of. I think that's, I think for me as a customer, um, that shows, you know, not, in, not only uh, with you, but with, with all of the employees that are here. Um, and I tell you, I, I like having my trades. I like having the collections and all that kind of stuff. But there's something, there's something so magical for me coming in and getting, um, getting this week's issue of Conan or getting this week's issue of uh, John Wick, even though I know it's only going to run for like five books or War of the Realms. I had a blast with that one, and I was really iffy on it. I didn't know if I wanted to do it, um, but it was getting to talk to a real person, and it's cool seeing something in the box. Yeah, that's really nice. neat. I have that. I have. I remember that feeling very well. And serialized comics are, you know, there for a reason. People like that. Some people, 
you know, really enjoy that, uh, those installments. Uh, so I don't think we couldn't talk about comic books and a comic book shop owner without talking about this ridiculous popularity of pre comic book day. Right. You'd been owning the shop before that came around. So when that when you first heard about that, did you think it was going to catch on? What did you think? Because now I mean, and I'm actually really interested. How does that look as far as how busy you are and the business and and the numbers of people through the door? Like, is it something that works really well for you, or is it a wash, but you like seeing everybody's faces? Um, it's a little bit of it? both. It's a really expensive day to put on. We do a lot of stuff, you know, free pizza, mm -hmm. you know, snacks, uh, face painting, and, you know, all the stuff we do uh, that we give away for free makes it a, and the comics obviously cost us money. Um, so it's an expensive day, but it is worth it. Uh, and I remember when I first went to a free comic day before I opened the store, I felt like it was more for new people. Mm. Um, you know, it is targeted towards uh, families, kids. There's a lot of kid-friendly books that day. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really happy that, you know, a thousand plus people show up every year, the lines around the block, and they have a good time. That's all I really care about is people showing up and having fun. All right, so you've got someone that comes in and they say, you know, the Marvel movies are doing so great, and I used to read comic books. I got them at the grocery store, um, but I haven't read a comic book in 30 years. What should I start with? If you had to pick three trades, three collections, and say, you know what, here, read these three things, what collection would you give a relative newcomer um, who, who really has never read anything other than old school, you know, Justice League or Batman or something like that? Okay. Um, Saga's our best selling volume of all time so um <laughs> okay. I, I always say saga uh, i give you, that, you know that's number one for sure that book is accessible it's fun it's beautifully drawn mm. it's easy to get into it tells a great story it's the right amount of weird too. yeah absolutely <laughs> uh and it's 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 the best-selling book for a reason um I, I would probably give them matt fraction's hawkeye uh as a taste of what a really okay. good superhero comic could be uh that book is tons of fun it's so much fun and puts a smile on my face um and that's probably my best selling marvel book mm. um for a wild card i might throw in uh something i enjoy maybe descender it's a great okay and, you know that's an easy one for people to like uh maybe criminal maybe southern bastards but those maybe one of those three would be like the third wild card pick there are some suggestions for you so check those out well this is so cool uh i know you still have to uh, close a couple of things down. So I just want to say yeah. so, thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Um, I can't wait pleasure. to do all of that. And it's a Wednesday, but we didn't get here in time to get our box. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank right. you. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Greg. If you really liked it and you think the store looks cool, then swing in sometimes. It's in Norfolk, Virginia at 1905 Colonial Avenue. I really like doing these interview series, and so if you're from the area and you know someone you think that we should talk with, then send us a message and maybe we can set something up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. A big thanks to all of our patrons, and especially to Joan. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the different perks of being a patron. We put out videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and make sure that you follow us on Twitter and other social media. That's where we make our announcements if we have any of our bonus episodes. So until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. Yeah, we're set. Cool. Yeah. All right. That was not bad. Look at that. That's 20 minutes.